Hey, church family, we are so excited about this new hour of programming that we're able to put out on Sundays. And we want you to use it as a resource because as pastors, we want to be equippers. We want to make you guys all-stars for your family. We want you to make you those spiritual leaders, those spiritual warriors for your spouse and for your kids. And so we hope this is a tool uh, that is going to even take you to the next level and make it super easy for you to have those conversations at home about Jesus and those stories of the Bible and those those promises uh, from God that we rest on. Every Sunday at 10 o'clock, we're going to be rolling out a new episode of this, just like it would kind of be on a if we can even say it, normal Sunday, where we sit down with our kids and our families and have a Bible study together. Uh, me and Oakley are going to be working on this in the next few weeks, and we're so excited what this is going to look like and what this is going to be able to bring. All right, Oakley, over to you, man. Good morning, Kids Zone families. Uh, we want to welcome you to today's lessons. I'm Oakley Barger. I'm the children's minister here at First Christian Church. I uh, just wanted to let you know that you have two options uh, with the lessons for our clubhouse kids, which is toddler through fifth grade. Uh, we have a lesson for them, and the theme this month is Bloom. Miss Cassandra has been doing a great job with that. Uh, it is telling the kids uh, about that Jesus is alive. The scripture verse they've used is from Revelations uh, 1, 12. And we want to portray that and show that that uh, each day God is with us. And that is, Cassandra has been doing a great job with that. So the second option is for our adventure kids and our level up kids, which is kindergarten through fifth grade. Uh, those lessons this, this month has been talking about humility. And our scripture verse comes from Philippians uh, chapter 2, verses 3 through 8, uh, where Christ showed uh, humility uh, in his death, and we want to portray that to the kids with our lessons. Um, I want to encourage you as parents, as grandparents, uh, aunts and uncles, to sit down with your child and go over the lessons with, with them, and feel free to stop at any time during those lessons and be interactive with them, ask them questions, or if they don't understand um, something, you, we can go, you can go over that with them. I also want to encourage you to, uh, with the music videos, the dancing, get up, dance, have fun uh, with them, uh, be silly. Uh, this is how our kids worship. This is how they interact and how they need to connect to Jesus. Uh, Jesus wants to still connect with our kids just the same, uh, and it's just as important as when we listen to our lessons and our sermons and our songs. Uh, so we just wanted to give you a couple of options there, and uh, there'll be activity sheets that will be posted on the Facebook pages and uh, where you can connect to those and print those off and have those as weekly um, activity sheets for your kids. Enjoy today's lessons. Oh man, we're back. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are back. I want to share a passage with you students. Uh, this passage comes from Psalms 91. If you've got your Bibles, I'd love for you to turn there. You know, with us being in the social distancing and being cooped up at home and, and all of this talk of sheltering and taking refuge, you know, I rested on this passage this week and I want us to read us together. It's Psalms 91. So if you guys got your Bibles, got your apps, flip over there real quick. Let's read it together. Because one thing we want to do is equip you guys with tools. You know, this I really see this season as a testing of our faith. And, you know, you guys are kind of on your own right now. You know, I'm giving you tools. I'm giving you resources. We've got a student hangout on Friday nights at 7 p.m. where we're getting together and having conversations, checking in on each other. And, and we're doing Bible plans in the YouVersion Bible app and watching videos on Vogue. Um, but still being apart is really tough. And we need to check in on each other's faith. So Psalms 91 reads this. Let's read it together. And it says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Talking about God. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. 
Did you hear that? He will cover you with the feathers and under his wings and you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you will make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near you. Hey, let's say that together. The Lord is my refuge. Ready? The Lord is my refuge. May we rest on that this week. When you're feeling that anxiety, when you're feeling that depression, when you're feeling that, that closed offness and isolation, May we just go back to this passage and say, the Lord is my refuge. He is my shelter. And if I'm going to take shelter and refuge, I better do it in him. I would love here to just take a moment and, and lift our families up in prayer. Lift you up in prayer. Lift up your kids in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for this morning. We are so excited about what you are doing during this new season. God, and I know there's moms and dads out there right now who feel... Uh, that they are just holding on, trying to figure out this new reality. They're having to be teachers. They're having to work from home. They're having to figure out a new normal and, and kind of what just seems chaos. God, we lift them up. And God, for our students, for our children, God, we pray uh, that your hand is upon them, that your shield of protection is around them. Thank you for all of those who are protecting us right now, those first responders, those who are on the front lines of this, this illness, our doctors, our nurses, our ERs, hospitals. Uh, but God, help us to manage this at home. Help us to really realize that we are in control of our family's future and faith. And God, we put our trust and our hope in you. And uh, those days when we don't have the tools and when we aren't equipped enough to do what needs to be done, may you fill in those gaps with the Holy Spirit. God, we just invite that Holy Spirit to, to help us make, be better people today than we were yesterday and help us be better tomorrow than we were today. God, we love you. Don't give up on us. <laughs> Moms and dads, you're doing a great job. Hang in there, and if there's anything you need, reach out to us. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys ready for some fun and some worship this morning? What? I can't hear you. Okay, I'm going to need you guys to get real loud. Here we go. We're going to count down for five, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Here we go.
week. I hope you had a wonderful Easter. Um, you know, last week we talked about how Jesus had died on the cross uh, for our sins, and then he rose again. You guys remember how many days it was when he rose? Three days. Three, Three days. days. Three days. And so some of Jesus' best friends, his disciples, they were really sad. And so they decided to go fishing. And wouldn't you believe it, while they're fishing, they look over on the beach, and Jesus is on the beach. And he's got a fire just like ours, and he was cooking some fish. Let's check out our video. Who? Who? You know what time it is? It's time to hear a story full of wonder. There's so much fun we'll have learning together. So let's go down, go down to the clubhouse with Molly and his friends. Let's go down, down, down to the clubhouse where wonder. and have been waiting and waiting for them to bloom. I think today's the day, but I'm afraid to look and see. Maybe there are so many flowers that I won't even be able to walk in the clubhouse. That might be too many flowers. Maybe the flowers have grown so big and tall that they're hitting the top of the clubhouse. That might be too tall for a flower. <sighs> Okay, here I go, it's time to look. Do you wanna look with me? Cover your eyes and count to three with me. Go ahead, cover your eyes. Now let's count to three. One, two, three. Wow, oh wow, they bloomed and they're perfect. Not too many and not too tall, they're just right. These are absolutely perfect, do you know why? My grandma has a spot on her windowsill that will be just right for these flowers. Who? Who? It's Ollie. Hello, Kai. Who? Who? What beautiful flowers. I love that blue. I'm going to give them to my grandma when I have breakfast at her house. What a wonderful breakfast for you. I know about another special breakfast, too. So let's hear this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? I've got a Bible story for me and you. <laughs> okay, guys, great walk today. Now it's time for breakfast. Oh, hi, friends. You guys say hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carrie, and this is my best dog, Stormy Jane, and her friends, Barkley and Goldie. We've been out on a long walk today, and everyone is hungry. Do you like breakfast? Me too. Do you like to eat waffles? Do you like cereal? Do you like fish? Some people have fish for breakfast, just like the people in today's true story from the Bible. Today, we're going to talk about what happened after Easter. Easter started out sad. Jesus died and was put in a tomb. But did he stay in there? No, he came back just like he said he would. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Well, not long after that, some of Jesus' friends were fishing when all of a sudden, they saw Jesus standing on the beach. Jesus is alive. They were so excited to see him. Show me your excited face. Ready? <laughs> yes, the disciples were so excited. And Jesus told his friends to come and have breakfast with them right there on the beach. They were so happy to be with their good friend Jesus again. And they knew that he loved them and that he would always be their friend forever and ever. And do you know what? Jesus loves you so much and he wants to be your friend too, forever and ever. How awesome is that? Jesus is alive and he wants to be your friend forever. Hey there, Ollie. Ollie, tell me, who is alive? Jesus is alive. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, 
Who is alive? Jesus is alive! That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Bye! <laughs> so there's your story, and it's all true. Jesus is alive, and he wants to be your friend forever, too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Ho! Ho! Wow, Jesus came back just like he said he would. Then he had breakfast with his friends and told them he wants to be their friend forever. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say, got it. Get it? Got it! Good. I can't wait to give my flowers to my grandma at breakfast. I can tell her that Jesus is alive and that he ate breakfast with his friends too. Ooh, I hope grandma's gonna make pancakes and bacon, yum. Forever and ever, Revelation 1.18. I am alive forever and ever, Revelation 1.18. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that story. Wouldn't it be awesome to be able to have a fire and just sit down and have breakfast with Jesus? Mm -hmm. I'm sure his friends, after three days of not being with Jesus, you just sit around your campfire and be with some of the closest people you love. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. All right. How about we real quickly go over our memory verse for this month? Are you guys ready? Yeah. I am alive forever and ever. Revelation 1.18. Hope you guys have a great week, Clubhouse Kids. We miss you. Bye. 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 God loves us and he gave his only son he is awesome Jesus nothing can stop him he's too strong yeah we're singing Jesus is alive he's alive oh yeah everybody celebrate Jesus is alive he's alive oh yeah he can do 
Today's lesson. Today's lesson is going to be about humility, how God demonstrates humility, and it comes from a book from Philippians, and it was written by Paul. So, uh, Ma uh, Alex, what does humility mean to you? Putting uh, before myself at church. Okay, Maggie. Um, humility means like. If I was playing in band, I would probably give, a, instead of me taking the best part of a song, I would give it to a better player. Okay. And Jonah, how about you? Uh, for me, it would be like, if I was playing basketball, I would like to pass more because I like other players to score and we could just play as a team better. All right. Before I get into the story today, before I get into the story and finish our spooky story, uh, let's watch today's video, alright? Well, of all the wonderful things he could have... Hey! Why did you get me a present, which is something I'm sure I'm gonna like? Because you keep doing things to deserve it! That's the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. Oh, yeah? Well, there's more where that came from. You're funny. Oh. Thank you. You're nice. I appreciate and that. And you are a good person. So are you! I know you really mean that. You know what? You're always here by my side and I never get sick of you. I'm so glad to hear Read it. Read my lips! You're the nicest friend a guy could have! You know what? <laughs> you know what? Just open that! Open it! I want to see the look on okay, your face! I will! Open it! Oh, oh, you got me a new game system before you bought yourself one. That's so touching. I'm so glad you like it. You want to play it? I would love to. Oh. This is awesome. I know! Beautiful people out there, I'm John. And I'm Brandon, and you're watching The So-and-So -and -so Show. I don't know if you folks out there know this, but John and I each take turns deciding what we want to do on the show each week. Yeah, yeah, every other week I plan stuff, and every other, every other week Brandon plans stuff. Right, and this week is my, my week! week. Do -do 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 -do. And today I have planned a show that's all about diving deep into a soul. Oh, that's great. But, a show about discovering life-changing truths. Yeah, again, but, but first... Let's play a meaningless game. What? Meaningless game. Yes. John, you can't do a meaningless game because this week... Oh, okay, is fine, fine, fine. Then it's time for a... Meaningful game. 
Okay, let's play your game. I'm sure it'll be great. Why, thank you, friend. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'll say the same thing when it's your turn to play a game next week. Actually, now that you mention Let's go play! All right, what's this meaningful game? It's a game called Flip It! Flip It! <laughs> How many times are we going to do that? How many times? As many as John wants! As many as I want! I'm sorry I asked. No problem! Let's play! Okay, great. Underneath each of these claws is an item that has been flipped up a side of down. Mm. All you have to do is identify what it is. Oh, am I the only one playing? Yep. Why? Because it's my day to make the show, and what I says uh, is... Oh, 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 don't want you cheating either, so blindfold okay. on. Boom. I'm not going to cheat. I'm gonna close my you're eyes. not going to cheat? Okay. Okay. Here is your first item. What is that? <laughs> it's like an octopus tentacle. <laughs> no, wait. No, I know what it is. Is it a bath mat? Uh, yes! Yeah. Very good. Great job. On okay. to our next one. On to our next one. All I right, really don't want to do this. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It's my day. I know. Play. It's it's fine. Okay. I'm, I'm doing blah, 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 blah. it. Here we go. Right there. Gross. Is this going to make me sick touching it? Mm hmm. What are you doing? I don't know what it is. It's like a, like an elephant eye or oh, something? No, that'd be gross. Yeah. But that would be really cool, though. Oh, is it like a mushroom? Oh, yes! Absolutely, you oh, got it. Good job. All right. Been cut off. Okay, one more, one, one more, more, one okay, more. Okay. All right, I'm going to bring it over here. All right, all right. Are you ready for this? this? Yeah, no, 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 it's yuck. It's a wet sponge. <laughs> it's not? Feels like no. Oh, gross. What was that? Something. Uh, can I? Sure, sure. If you want. Cool. <laughs> Is that pineapple upside down cake? Oh, wrong! It's an upside down pineapple upside down cake. <laughs> Get it? Or maybe we should call it, maybe we should call it a pineapple right side up cake. <laughs> Game over! Hey, uh, I'm getting the feeling that you're a little grumpy. No, I'm not. I just don't understand how that game was supposed to be meaningful. Okay, well, I wouldn't be this grumpy if it were your week to plan stuff. So. Yeah, about that. It's not actually. Oh, hey, hey, I almost forgot. It's Bible Story Time with Kellen. What's up, my friends? How's it going? Couldn't be better, Kellen. Although, just between the two of us, Brandon is a little grumpy. It's not between the two of you if I can hear you. See what I mean? I can still hear you. I'm sorry, did you say something? Hey, Kellen, what you got for us today? An app. Oh, like for our phones? Yup, and it's called Humble Pie. That never gets old. No? Hmm. This app is going to help me tell today's Bible story, along with you guys. You want us to download the app? If you would. Hmm. Oh, done. Okay. Yeah, but you, almost, you good? Almost got it. Just got a loading. Got it. Okay, open them up and watch what happens. Okay. Wow! This is really cool, Kellen. Hey, I can see Brandon. Hey, Brandon. It's like you're sitting next to me. <laughs> How do we play, Kellen? Actually, before we play, check this out. Excuse me, gents. The Apostle Paul wrote a bunch of letters in what we call the Book of Philippians. Paul wrote this. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. As you deal with one another, you should think and act as Jesus did. And how did Jesus act? Let's continue. Babu! In his very nature, he was God. But Jesus didn't take advantage of that fact. Instead, he made himself nothing. He did this by taking on the nature of a servant. He was humble and obeyed God completely. He did this even though it led to his death. Even worse, 
He died on the cross. Are you still there, fellas? Yep. You betcha. Why do I look like a bunny rabbit? You have a filter on. I have a what? You have a filter, filter on here, right here. Huh. All right. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Continue, Kellen. Great. Here's how you play. For each scenario I give you, you have to decide if you're going to put yourself first or if you're going to be humble. Simple, right? Sure, but I, I don't think either of us will pick what's selfish. <laughs> hmm. Good point. Maybe one of you should volunteer as the non-humble player. Sure, I'll help you out, Kellen. Oh. Perfect. All right, here we go. First scenario. You're running late for work. On your way, you see a lady drop her groceries. Do you stop to help her? Yes. I'll say no. <laughs> humble pie! Hmm? <laughs> what happened? Where did that pie come from? Uh. <sighs> I forgot to mention in this app, it involves virtual reality. Virtual? Look at my face! Is it, wait, is this a filter? No! Second scenario. You had plans to see the new superhero movie, but a friend needs your help instead. Do you help him? Yes. How about you? No. Humble pie! Ooh. Come on! Hey, you gotta eat the humble pie when you don't put others first, Brando. True. Although, I must say, he's being pretty humble already. How's that? Well, he's letting himself get hit in the face with a pie when you know it's his week. Uh, what are you talking about? Well, this is his week to plan the show, right? No. Wait. No? Are you sure? Is that true? Yeah. Uh, why didn't you say something to me? If you would have said something, I would have listened. Well, I tried, but every time... Are we going to finish this game or what? Um, I mean... Well... Third scenario. Okay. Go ahead. You want to watch soccer on TV, but your little sister really wants to watch cartoons. Do you let her watch? Yes. Say no. Say no. Fine. No. Humble pie! That was awesome. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, John. Yeah. That's not bad. Well, I'm not sure who won the game, but mm. I think the point's the same. Jesus put people first. He gave his life for us. We should do our best to think and act like Jesus did. Even if that means every once in a while giving up what we want or what we think we deserve. And even if it means taking the occasional pie to the face. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kellen. Yeah, thanks, man. Anytime. I'll see you guys around. Bye, man. You know, these towels never fail. I know. And they don't stain. <laughs> so. So. Dude, I can't believe you just gave up a show that was rightfully yours and just let me ramble on like that. Yeah. You would never use so many graphics. Never. Never. Well, maybe just one more. What? Reveal the question! What keeps you from putting others first? Well, you could be easily distracted like, Has that mannequin always been over there? Talk about it with each other. What keeps you from putting others first? Oh, I mean, I, I, I feel so bad. Don't beat all. yourself up. Hey, maybe you can make it up to me by letting me plan the next two shows in a row. Deal! <laughs> Thank you. Till next time, I'm Brandon. And I think that mannequin is getting closer. And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. That was a cool story we had today. Uh, the book, the book that Paul had written to uh, uh, was Philippians, 
And where our lesson today is coming from chapter 2, verses 3 through 8. Jesus showed us how to be humble. And it's very hard for us to be humble because, to be honest, we like things to be our way a lot of times. I'm going to read that from uh, Philippians. Paul wrote this to us, and he wrote it to the Christian, to the Christian uh, family, us. And he was telling us, he was encouraged by the things that we were showing. And the, the strange thing was, Paul was in prison when he wrote this. So Paul's situation was not great, but he had a lot of joy and a lot of happiness in finding out that his church was showing the, the humility that Christ showed. In verse 3 it says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather in humility value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Remember, Jesus didn't come here to be a, a, heaven, a earthly king. He didn't come here to show other people up. He came here to serve other people. He came here to show us how to live. He died on the cross for us. And that's what it says here. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. After being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. He became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Wow. Jesus showed us the ultimate humility, and that is what we need to do in our daily struggles. Each day we, we find ourselves selfish of wanting things for us. It, it's okay it's okay to want things. It's okay to have things. But when we start putting ourselves above others, that is when we get in trouble. Guys, that's our story today. We love you guys. We miss you. And uh, we'll be talking to you later. Let's get back to our hot dogs here and our spooky story. <laughs> Bobo was lost and I had no clue where to find him. I had no clue where to find him. In this thing. And I laying down my pride. Gonna put somebody else at number one this time. Don't wanna be in a world where it's all about me. I'll take second to whoever is around me. I'm giving up my number one position.
more for anyone around. 